Hello. Welcome to Deck Tips. My name is Travers and this is the YouTube channel where we discuss the nerdy things in life. If you like this video make sure to share it with your friends, so prove to them how cool you are, and that you have great taste. Now, on with the program. Today is a really good video. It actually stems from a video I did two weeks ago. Um, I showed you guys how to use a random CSS property and attribute, or sorry, a random CSS property and value called box model. And we talked about how to use that property to make really interesting buttons. Why buttons? I don't know. They're, they're a pretty important part of the internet. They're the things that you click. And, uh, but I got to thinking, you know, after I published the video, I answered a few questions in the comments section and I realized that maybe I brushed past the few more uh, nuanced and interesting and kind of important things to understand about box shadow. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I really wanted to dig in and teach you guys about the box model, box sizing, and how they relate to box shadow. So let's uh, dive in and start with the box model. Now I have a bunch of markup already written and a bunch of things are just hidden. So one by one I'm going to reveal them and talk about them. The first thing is going to be the box model. Here is what I'm showing you as the box model. So the green bit is the content. When you set a width of anything, in this case the width is I think 200. Uh, yeah, so the width is 200. Uh, this green bit, the, the, the actual content area, is the, is the uh, space that's going to take that width. The blue bit is the padding. If you set the padding, that's going to come in here and that's going to be added onto the content. So in this case, it would be 20 pixels on each side of the content of box, which is 200. So there's going to be a 240 pixels from here all the way to here. Let me zoom in a little bit. 240 pixels from here to here. Next in the box model, you'll have a border. And the border also adds to the overall size of the box, um, <clears throat> but it's added upon. So this is a two pixel stroke. And so you're going to have 200 pixels for the content. 20 pixels on each side, so that's 240 pixels, plus an additional two pixels for the border stroke. So this is going to be 244 pixels wide from border to border. And then uh, after that, you have the margin. The margin is represented by this coral color, and it sits on the outside of the border. And then here we're adding another uh, 20 pixels on each side. So this is the box model. When anybody talks about the box model, they're talking about how these elements of content box, padding, border, and margin relate to each other and what you have them programmed to be. Now you can take a look at the box model of any object. Like let's take a look at this heading here. And if you go to the inspector and go to computed, you have the box model, model written out right here. So the content box, padding, border, margin, and, and um, yeah, border and margin. Now in this case, we don't have any of them set other than if this has like a margin bottom of 50 pixels and the height is calculated here. So we can see what the effects will be in the DOM. And you can do that for any element on the page. Let's take a button up here and inspect it. And that's, that's the, it's got some five pixels of padding on top and bottom, or sorry, uh, margin. It's got some padding, 22 and 14. Looks like they have some border here, nearly a pixel. All right, so that's the box model. For the next example, I've taken a few of these boxes and shoved them inside of a container to show how these uh, box models, how these boxes relate to each other. So in this example, there are no borders on these boxes. All of them are floated left. They're 180 pixels wide with a 10 pixel margin. And then the parent is going to be uh, 600 pixels wide, right? So if you add them all up together, 180 plus 20 is gonna be 200 pixels of the box for the, each of these units which is added all together is 600. 
So they fill the parent perfectly. There's no room, there's no wiggle room built in right there. If we add one pixel, that line will break and they'll start to collapse under. Let me show you what that one looks like. This next, next example is the exact same thing, except for the boxes here each have a one pixel border. Now, just that one little pixel causes these uh, boxes to fold. So this is why it's important to think about the amount of space that your, your elements are gonna take when you're laying them out on the page before you get, get really too far into it. You have to think ahead. How many, you know, am I gonna have some border on it? Am I gonna, how much padding is gonna be inside of uh, these boxes? And, um, you know, or else things like this could happen. Now I'm gonna scoot down over here to the lesson box. And this is where we're gonna do a little bit of work. Now the thing that I didn't tell you about the box shadow property is that it itself is not calculated in the box model at all. It's just considered as decoration. So uh, watch this, box shadow, that's not shadow. Box shadow, zero pixels, zero pixels, zero pixels, one pixel and black. See, it looks like we've added a border on, but we don't have to worry about those floats folding under because the border, which is actually a box shadow, is not calculated, is not even considered inside of the box model calculation. Now, that's a really cool way. But there's actually a better way we can do this because instead of rendering a shadow, which the browser has to calculate, okay, how big is this shadow? How far offset is this shadow? How blurry is this shadow? We can just tell, uh, we can use a border which is really quicker for the browser to render. So if you're concerned about browser performance, as you most likely should be, we can tell the browser how we want it to consider the box model, how we want it to calculate it. So by default, it calculates from the uh, content box and then adds padding and border and margin, right? But what if I wanted to say, hey, you figure out the math, but I'm just going to tell you that I want this box to be 180 pixels out to the edge of the border. I'm going to add any padding I want. I'm going to add any border I want. You just figure out what it's going to be. And this is how we do that. We say box sizing uh, border box and border one pixel solid black. Now we've just changed the way that the browser thinks about the box model and everything lines up perfectly. So that's another way. It's gonna be a little less taxing uh, for the rendering. Now that's only gonna really matter if you have a lot of elements doing this. Just for three like this, it doesn't matter. Oh, I thought of another way that we could achieve this you know, stroke around the box without having to recalculate the, um, the shadow or the, the box model. And it's with using an outline. outline one pixel solid black. See, an outline. And I'm not really sure what the benefits are or drawbacks of using an outline. If you guys know, leave a, leave a comment down below and tell me which one you use most often or give us any tips. Okay, that's it all we got for today, guys. I appreciate okay. you watching the show. Thanks for watching. Remember to tell your mom I said what's up.